Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, as Pierre said, I'm Antoine Cotin. I'm the CTO of Carbomap. Um, I'm French. Carbomap is a Scottish company based in Edinburgh. Um, so I'm here to, uh, to talk about uh, UAV LiDAR for forest management. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, what we do in Carbomap, and then I will jump to, to, the, to this subject. And I will end up with some, uh, some uh, food for thoughts on how we can effectively use LiDAR in forest management. So Carbomap uh, is a spin-out company from the University of Edinburgh. We spun out about five years ago. Uh, and we took with us uh, about 10 years of research in multispectral LiDAR. Um, I will explain briefly what is this technology. Um, so besides this core uh, technology, we also do service in data processing applied to forest. Uh, and we basically have expertise in any kind of remotely sensed data and any scale. So it can be satellite-borne, airborne, UAV-borne, terrestrial um, data. Uh, we are very much specialized in SAR, INSAR, LiDAR, full waveform LiDAR processing multispectral, hyperspectral, optical imagery. Um, so we will start with the basics, but I'm pretty sure everybody knows what a LiDAR is and how it works. But just to make sure uh, that everybody knows, and we are all on the same page. LiDAR, you take a laser head, you point it towards the ground, shoot a laser beam, and you record the light intensity return to the unit over time, and you end up with a what's called a full waveform signal, which looks like that. Um, and that's what would be the rawest data you can get uh, from a LiDAR system. This is where our expertise lies. We usually tend to get this data from the data provider. And then we have our own algorithm to process. You usually look for the peaks. And all peaks represent a discrete point of your point cloud. And then you have a 3D point cloud. And in forestry, uh, to make th things very simple, we just look for the first and last return. And that gives you the three heights. Uh, keep this in mind, uh, because that will have a, an impact on the, on the actual data. Um, so multispectral LiDAR, it's about the same principle. But the point is, you take multiple wavelengths or multiple laser heads that will fire um, lasers beam at the same time and sharing the same optical path. And again, you record the light bounce back for each wavelength over time, and you end up with three wavelengths. Uh, because they are coherent in space and time, they are overlap overlapping very well. And when you process each, you end up with a point cloud that has, for each point, uh, multispectral information, which is very different from when you do data fusion from multispectral imagery and point cloud, where it basically lies only on the top of first return of your point cloud. So you very have a 3D uh, multispectral information with this technology. So I will also just uh, go very quickly on that. Why not photogrammetry for forestry? We've been asked very many times why we, we or why they shouldn't use photogrammetry. Uh, when they try to do forest uh, inventory or forest mapping. Um, that's a data set coming from GeoGeo. Uh, it's a Glasgow-based company. Um, it was fl flew with an EB wing uh, with infrared. Uh, some people claim that using infrared kind of nails the problem of tree mapping. So here, everything is nice and neat for a top view. When you look on the side, you start to see that it's not really as good as it should be. Uh, when you mesh it, sorry, the quality is not good. But the, the biggest problem is when you, you look at the data, you don't have any ground information under the, the canopy. And this is very the, the, the pinpoint issue when you use photogrammetry. All right, so some, some case study or case demonstration of what we did. Uh, I'll start off with uh, a mission we carried with uh, Yellowscan. Uh, so we basically were committed by COILTA, which is the Irish Forestry Commission, to, to survey about three square kilometers uh, for a study uh, evaluation. Um, so we contracted Yellowscan to flew uh, 
to flew the unit and collect the data. Uh, we had very hard time to get the mission planned due to bad weather. And when we get the, the team there, well, the weather was not good enough. And we end up staying or being stuck here for a week trying to collect the, the three square kilometers um, in, 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 a, in a row. Um, they, they did a very good job. And uh, this is basically one of the best uh, results, where basically they, they took the, the side of collecting a, a great data set and drop a bit the production side of the data collection. From that, of course, you can uh, you go through the, I would say, the, the, the normal uh, processing workflow in forestry. You start off with uh, what's called a CHM, or canopy height model, which is basically the tree height extraction. Uh, so you need to find the ground, and every point uh, above the ground are given a height uh, information, and then you end up with a, a tree height information or canopy height model. From there, uh, you can derive other products. Uh, it's either, I would say, free, uh, free evaluated based on a hectare pixel, hectare being like the, the norm, uh, normal size or uh, unit size in uh, forestry. Uh, we can work on the plot level where we've been given some shape files representing a plot, and then we can extract information per plots and per trees and so on and so forth. Another case uh, that we uh, are presenting here, um, this one was flew uh, about a month ago uh, in Oregon. And basically, uh, in that configuration, it was Aerial Inspection Resources, or AIR, that contacted or contracted Yellowscan to, to acquire the data. And, they, and Yellowscan referred us as a forest expert to process the data. So we've been given the data, uh, already calibrated and, and matched. And we, we just process, process it in terms of, um, of a for, forest product. Uh, I didn't mention it before, but the point density, of course, is very high, very, 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 very dense. Uh, you've got a, a very a nice information within the whole canopy. Um, so we flew, I mean, uh, Yellowscan flew uh, five areas. It's again about three square kilometers. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the co data collection took two days. Uh, weather was nice. Uh, that's the kind of data. Uh, compared to the Coilter uh, data set, uh, this was much more hilly environment. Um, and uh, you might know that uh, hilly terrain can become very challenging in terms of classifying your point clouds. So this requires a, a, a much more uh, manual cleaning, manual inspection of your classified point cloud. Uh, to make sure that you, you didn't get any issue uh, with the uh, classification. That's another area. And here I just want to pinpoint that uh, even under dense vegetation, and again, it's not showing very well, but you still have very good terrain information that remains there. Um, you've got holes because I, I limited the, the, the length of the long side of the mesh triangle to five meters. So every single hole in the dam is a, is a five meter or longest uh, hole. The other project that the foresters are looking for is a precise DTM for their operational uh, planification, how they will send people on the ground, how they will deploy machinery to cut down trees or to harvest trees. So they're always looking to have a like slope direction, slope angle, stuff like that. So, and we can effectively extract that uh, from these data sets. And in, in terms of what we usually deliver, so we deliver a, a GIS ready product uh, or project for QGIS, and we deliver these kind of tables where you have the tree count, maximum height, average height, standard deviation, the basal areas, the DBH, and this kind of information. So I'm, I'm done here. I would have other stuff to do or to say, but uh, that's, that's me finished. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions.